Yes, uh, that's Malaysia special and also secret. Ah, uh, yes. We're gonna review this out in the open. Oh no! Hello, hello, and welcome to our very first episode of our Spot Check, where we're the all-in-one podcast station from sports to lifestyle. In our very first episode today, we are welcoming Janice. Hi, Hi Janice. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. Yeah. So she's a ex-pro badminton player in women's double. Yeah. So a bit of introduction, you can tell. Hi, my name is Janice Woon. I'm former national badminton player. My highest world ranking is number nine. So currently, I'm the founder of Medley Sport Academy. Wow, thanks for that intro. I can't believe that I actually have a pleasure to meet you today. You're Thank welcome. you. So, uh, how was the jam to coming here today? Is it really difficult to reach here? Uh, actually, no. No, it's just yeah, I was smooth surprisingly, picking, surprisingly. Yeah, like because that. normally come here like take about uh, 40 minutes for my house. Mm, okay, so smooth journey here, I guess. Yep. Throughout our whole life journeys. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the meat of the content because I got I have to know some stuff. Like, how long have you been playing badminton? I realized that you go into pro badminton scene at a very early age? Yeah, I started my badminton since I was 10 years old. Mm. Uh, that time I was influenced by my dad. Because, oh! Yeah, <laughs> so uh, my dad is a badminton lover, so mm -hmm. his dream is to become national player. Ah, but unfortunately, right. because of the family financial is not that strong yet. So uh, his dream didn't uh, fulfill. So yeah, I'm here to help mm. him to fulfill his dream. To represent. Yep. Is he proud of you today? Uh, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, in regards to your play, your tournament place, I believe you went throughout multiple, most of your tournament plays are in doubles. Is there any reason why you don't play singles in particular? Uh, when we started to join in Bukit Jaya Sports School. Okay. Uh, so, we start with playing single. Singles, okay. Yeah. So, when we are at age 16, the mm. coach will decide whether you should continue single or doubles. Oh, okay. Yeah. So unfortunately, I go for diverse player. So oh, the coach time, recommend you to double. Yeah, but then that time every players uh wish it just to play single, because oh, okay. single you can play uh the whole court without oh, uh worrying. No one uh, to hit accident uh. Yeah, because you need to worry about your partner. Yeah. Sure. Because if if you play double, you have to think about your partner. Then have to think his uh her. Position. Her feeling. Oh, her feeling. Uh, her feeling. feeling. <laughs> yeah. So if let's say she, her mood not good, oh. then she doesn't want to play. Then it was like, oh, you were so frustrated. But of course, <coughs> uh, everyone have uh, wish to play single. Not even. Uh, not only you can play the whole court, but also the price money is good. Ah, yeah. You share the whole reward itself, right? Yes. But nice. then uh, after discuss with my coach, I was like, why you change me to double? <sighs> after that, she, she analyzed to me, say, uh. There's a better, better achievement if you go for doubles because the time doubles we do have double department. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So That's yeah. So the uh my coach say if you go for doubles maybe you can become top top pair in doubles. Oh. But if you go for single, you are not in the top because before me there's a few seniors quite good than me. Oh. So if I go there maybe I rank number five number six so mm. I have to fight with the senior. But if I go for doubles, maybe I'm the first already. Oh, okay. Yeah. But and you have to go according to what your coach said. You have to go lah, or you cannot just say no. I want to go single. Yeah, of oh, course. Oh, you want to? Cannot. Be we have to follow a uh, coach, uh, instruction. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I believe you have a good partner. So to say, a bit of a uh, stay for a very long time. Starting, uh, no, because uh, oh. because I entered national junior national team when I was yes, fifteen years old. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was the weakest one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So imagine I'm the weakest, but I have to fight with my senior or maybe my same age, uh, teammate. So I have to work very hard so to make sure that I can become the top. Because you have to become the top, only the coach will consider to send you for competition. So the partner consider your senior or like same level or junior? Uh, of course, I have to counter my senior. The counter. Yeah, of course. Oh. Because uh, my senior have been in national junior team in like. Uh, since they are 12 years old. Okay. So I already late for 3 years. Ah, okay. uh, so I have to catch up. Lah. Catch up, they have to uh, oh, in sync with them. Yep. I have to work even harder, double, ah. double work. <laughs> but also, I'm quite lucky because uh, I'm left handed. Oh, yeah. so that you won't crash with each other. No, your your no, no. partner is right handed. Yeah, because most, uh, mostly 
my Tammy all is right handed. Okay. So for doubles, if you are left handed, you got more advantage. Oh, because you can stay in that side and he can stay in that side uh, and more rich, I presume. Means uh, if I left handed, my partner is right handed, so both of us is forehand. Oh, forehand left and right hand. Oh, okay. Yeah, so where where the opponent hit to us is mostly to our more. most to our forehand side. Forehand side. Oh. Yeah, okay. so you can see like uh most of the top player like Kuken Ket, Tan Bu Hyung, Chang Han Fuk Lim Wan Wa, Chi Yu Hui, Wang Bei Ti, they are all left. Right handed. Oh, this combination is really interesting. Yeah. So normally you want to scout for double, make sure your partner is one of them is right, <laughs> one of them is left. Yeah. <laughs> there's uh there's Malaysia special and also secret. Uh yes. We're gonna review this <laughs> out to open. Oh no! <laughs> but okay, I mean at least it's something that for me to learn is something new as yeah. well. Because I play double sometimes. Most of the time I'm right handed, my partner right handed, and we tend to like tend to smack him in the face, <laughs> so that tend to happen. But I understand, now yeah. Now this makes more sense. One is left-handed, one is right-handed. It's more advantage and also, uh, mm. besides that, also because of my height. Mm. Because uh, that time my coach is China Chinese from China. Mm. So uh, their culture is, as long as the player is thin and tall, they got more advantage in badminton. Oh, that's For the their same, same thinking as bas basketball. Uh, basketball, of course, uh, you have to be higher. Yeah, the higher the you go, you Yeah, but more for more. Chinese, uh, for China, they are all their mindset, their culture is taller. Since, you are better. Yes, but then now no. Oh wait, what now different? Now different. It, now you can see like in Japan, right? World number one is very short. Yes, it's like one five five cm like this. One five five. That oh, that's really short. Around around that, yeah, not that high, but then her. Ability is very strong. Cover, coverage coverage is very good. That means she jump also have to jump extra high as well for Sachio. Yeah, Sachio oh. I think. But then she can run very fast. Ah, okay. And she plays singles, I presume. Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's a there's a surprise to hear. Oh yeah. my god. Because the first time she uh she went <coughs> for competition, I was like, oh, why this player? I mean, so I mean, so not tall, yeah. not tall. Because normally you will see like other country is all tall, but. She's most special one. Yeah, but when I play, I see she play the way she play. I was like, wow, I'm impressed. It's really good. This makes this breaks a lot of records. Yeah. But then that means if you speak about uh going to the international, I believe you also got play throughout other countries as well. Like got invited to play. Yeah, internationally. mostly we will go for other country for competition to ah, gain right. our uh world ranking. Ah, okay. Yeah, so uh, I almost went for like twenty countries. Yeah, okay. except of, except of US, Canada, because it's too far away. Yeah, understandable, <laughs> understandable. Yeah. Um, then I'll curiously ask when you go to these countries, right? I presume they accommodate you, fight everything. Included. Yeah, okay. actually it's a uh, BAM means Badminton Malaysia Association. Oh, yeah. Badminton Company Association own. Malaysia. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay. So this association covered your expenditures. Yeah, they will arrange everything. everything. They will arrange our flight ticket, our accommodation. Uh, it will give us allowance, Ooh, nice. but depends country. So if let's say we fly for like Europe, they will give even more because <gasps> because it's so expensive yeah. their food. But uh, then when you go to uh, this country to play, is it when you touch down you immediately start the tournament or you got some free and easy session? Like you uh, get to experience the culture of these countries. So normally we all once we touch out, watch uh, touch down, we will like uh go for test court. Okay. Test court session because uh Eric, immediately uh oh. depends okay depends sometimes we we'll immediately <coughs> for example if I go Europe normally we will fly during the night time okay so when we reach there it's morning oh so it's morning then we like put down our luggage then get some breakfast maybe. no breakfast no whoa whoa okay like one or two hours then we go straight away go for the test court Yikes. yeah because uh the organizer was will arrange the test court session for us. Mm -hmm. So like one country, maybe like one day only one session for test court. Imagine there's a uh, 20, 30 players, but only got like four courts or three courts. Oh. So we sometimes- The we courts are limited. Limited, la. but sometimes like we all got five department, uh, two singles, men single, lady single, uh, women's double, men's double, mixed double. Oh, so every of them need to test court, test court, yes, test court. Imagine five uh, events, mm -hmm. there's only like two courts or three courts, it's like two hours only. So means uh, every event like take uh, half an hour. Actually, yeah. that's not enough because oh. uh, why we yeah why we have to test court is because of the air conditioner. Oh. 
right. and also of the shutter court, okay. and also the hall. How do I say space? Some hall is very small. Okay. Some hall is very big. Okay. Uh, so if let's say the hall is very big, the the time flying down the shutter court will be oh. slower. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if let's say the the court is more like uh, what we usually see in Malaysia, right? Yeah. So because the timing you already used to it already, but once wow. you go to like big big hall like the uh, height of the hall is probably higher. Like Bukit Jalil, okay. that one is quite big. Yeah. So the flying time will come down will be slower. Wow. So if we cannot like hit like normally our rhythm like wow. where where we train. Because the atmosphere is different, ma. When you have a higher height, that means the ball can even shoot even higher. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Is it probably like that? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, but I presume that uh, when you go to these type of countries and play, I think you might go through some culture shock. Is it safe to say? Any uh, culture shock when you go through there? For example, like we go for this Mexico. Okay. Mexico, the altitude is very high. Oh. So we're using the, the slowest shutter court. Okay. Even we use like 5% of our strength, it's like flying very far outside. Oh, okay. So it's like it's really powerful just by putting a bit of strength. A bit really. of strength, but then you can fly out all the way. Oh, so that's outboard already? Outboard already? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we have to learn how to control strength. Control first is control is like no lifting. Means oh. uh, you cannot lift or hit high shot. We only can put net, oh. uh, net or smash. Yeah, actually not easy. That one's very challenging. Very challenging. Uh, I presume you're fighting some high ranking players as well. Uh, yeah. Hmm, okay, understandable. Then uh, when you play during these uh, times, is there like your partner goes with you? Like, is it a fixed same partner all the way from A to Z? Uh, no, <coughs> starting we keep changing, changing until our coach think that uh, the best it's both, yeah, best combination only they will send us for the highest competition. Oh, okay. So like a partner we been like almost like seven, eight years. Okay. Yeah, because uh, because it's not easy that we keep changing partner. Yeah. If you keep changing partner, our ranking have to like start all again and again and again. Oh. So it's very hard to communicate until very high. So and then your rhythm and sync have to redo again to match up. Correct, the correct. Then how many partners do you have throughout your lifetime? Wow. Oh. <laughs> I think... Uh, Try your tournament days. Four. 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 Yeah. That's quite okay. That's quite okay. Uh, consider not consider too bad. not too bad. Not too bad, yeah. Hmm, okay. Then, I'm quite uh, lucky actually. Quite lucky. All really partner lucky. good lah. Uh, Can sync up lah, easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, consider also because of uh, help from coach, mm. especially coach Rasi. Oh. Ah, okay. Your coach will be there to yeah. jaga and make sure you guys are good for comp. Yeah, because coach Rasi is uh consider my my best mentor. Oh. Because uh, that time I was in junior and I was. 18 years old, mm. then uh, he brings me out to senior team. Oh, the coach saw something new, I presume? Right? Uh, yeah, that time, me and another partner, Tan Mi Kiong, we partner together. Yeah, mm. so we go for like a senior competition, which is the only junior pair who go for the high competition. That's good, that's good. So, throughout your journey, is that like, what is the first medal that you won? You don't mind me asking. Uh, I remember when I won Indonesia Open. Indonesia? Yeah. That time... Uh, the first medal is not within Malaysia? Whoa! No, whoa no, I, no. I'm surprised! Whoa, okay. Actually, I like Indonesia a lot. Ah, I got... Okay. Uh, that time, quite a lot of Indonesian fans. <laughs> Bali or Jakarta? It's not Jakarta. Balim, Balimbang, I think. But your first uh, medal was won in Indonesia in yeah. the tournament. Indonesia. Oh, that means you went through a lot of Malaysia tournaments before reaching Indonesia or? Uh, actually that tournament is not easy for me to get champion because uh, semi-final I faced China oh. which is quite ranking quite high than me oh. then after that I upset them then go for a final again and also uh, face again China oh, so, oh, Two times China? Two times China, oh. yeah actually that time it's not easy to play China oh. yeah so um, me and Vivian and I never think too much just like just enjoy the game yeah so I think we are fortunate enough to win. <laughs> congrats, congrats. Yeah, thank you. Is it one of your most memorable wins? Like, do you have any memorable tournament where you feel like, oh, I'm really difficult, but still managed to win in the end? Any memorable ones? Uh, I remember when I was <coughs> uh, in, in Asian Games, oh, in Cheon, okay, Korea. Yeah, 2014. 
uh, that time I faced this quarterfinal with the world number one, China. Quarterfinal world number one, female doubles. Yeah, that time they are in top form. Mm. No other pairs can beat them in like straight set or rubber set, not even win one game. But we are so, that time we really performed very well. Yeah, we just give all out and we won the game. So did you win him instant two set? Uh, no. Oh, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> rubber set, rubber set. Rubber set, okay. Quite close game. Quite close. So yeah. first, uh, first set you won? I won, the okay. second, second set. Second set, they won. Yeah. They like, third set, let's beat them. Yeah, let's go yeah. in and win. Yeah. They win. Uh, is it like, okay, is it a close match? Like 21-18 or? I think quite it's quite, quite, close. quite close. Quite close. So that means when you hit 21, they're like 18 or 17 lah nearby. I think deals sir. Do Oh, wait, so you hit 23, 24 uh, yeah, or onwards yeah. to... I, I think so, I can't remember, but I oh. know it's very close game. Very close. Mm. You guys even had the deals until like 30 plus? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> okay. No 30 plus, <laughs> the maximum plus. is 30 only. Oh, oh, okay. You can deal until 30. You can deal until 30. Okay, so deal 30, if you want to hit 30 first, got him. Yes. Okay. Oh, that, that is a new rec new thing I learned today. Yep. Something new, I learned <laughs> every day. Yeah, that's right, folks. So for you guys, you don't know, deal 30, ah. Don't go more than 30 or else, ah, we'll hit 30 first, lah. <laughs> okay, but uh, I heard that after, throughout so many tournaments, you slowly retired due to any injury. Like, mm, did yeah. something happen? Actually, uh, why I was started to play badminton is also because of my body condition. Okay. Since I was young, actually, uh, even I walking, I will fall down. I'm sorry, what? We were walking and it's like, <laughs> fall down. Yes, oh. because my leg strength is not strong. Okay. Even I cross over the 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 strain long kang, I will fall inside one. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's why it's That's also, a lot of damage. Yeah, no, oh. but also it's one of the reasons why my dad sent me for badminton also. Oh, train your leg lah. To, yeah, to strengthen my leg. Okay, okay so after when <coughs> I was in a senior team, it started to like, because of uh, the high intensity training, so I also I have to work double work with others so that I can become the top. So I keep training. Your training legs, mainly your legs, right? Yeah, oh. train a lot, train a lot. So I keep training, then my my injury is like on and off. Sometimes like uh, injured already, but then I rest like one, one, uh, two, two weeks like that. Then back to competition again. It's like never really rest too long because in badminton you couldn't rest like more than one month. Oh. If rest more than one month is considered very serious. Yeah. Your ranking might drop as well, I presume. Yes, of course. So uh, and also psychology is very important because when you're injured, right? So your coach will like will ask you first thing: Can you train today? So if you answer no, then their face will be very black. No. Oh. Yeah, because they wish to, they, they hope you can train. Oh. So that they, you, if you train more, so of course you can perform even better in your competition. But when you're in injured, right? Myself always think that I want to train, but sometimes I want to train, but my leg could uh, not allow me to do that. Mm. Yeah, so it's very, uh, how to say, it's very depression. Especially wow. when it's very depressive lah. Yeah. So it's like on and off, on and off until when I was uh twenty eight years old, twenty nine oh. like that. Okay. Yeah. So I rested like uh almost two months. So as what I told you, like if you rest for one month it's considered very serious. So I rest for two months. So every day I wake up, I look at my leg, oh, swollen again. So because when once I swollen I couldn't bend my knee. Oh, okay. I couldn't bend my knee means I cannot move already. Wow. Even I'm walking also very difficult. Yeah, so like uh, two months rest, after I consult doctor again, doctor said, okay, you cannot play again, you have to rest again. So I was like, rest again? So it's like how? Because like two months actually it's like, can go, oh, for, surgery can go for surgery already. Two months is too long. Oh. Yeah, okay. so I consult doctor, doctor said, uh, you have to rest because you overuse your Leaks. your your joint. So okay. it's like, hurt your joy already, so you have to rest. So, I asked him, so if I keep resting, will you recover? Then he said that no, I have to go for surgery. Okay, and for, did you? For both knee. For both knee. Oh. For both knee, because both I have a uh, meniscus okay. and cartilage problem for, oh. for both knee. So okay. he suggests me to go for surgery. But then I was like, oh, surgery, one leg, no, both knee. Both knee. Yeah, so, 
really very sad and depression. Uh. So after that, I... Is there a chance that where a surgery will not succeed? Like, the chances of the surgery succeeding? Is it a like guarantee that after surgery, you can play already? Or? Not guarantee one. Oh! This one not guarantee one. It's so a 50-50 after, chance? Or? But he said that maybe you surgery, you can go back to the court. But for me, I think it's very hard. Because uh, when <coughs> you eat, go for surgery for both knee, mm -hmm. it takes me like one year for rehab. Oh, rehabilitation takes one rehabilitation year? Rehabilitation for one year. So okay. imagine one year I only do rehab, it's like mental very torturing. Oh, it's yeah. worth it. <laughs> so I consult for other specialists, then uh, they say that if I stop badminton, like social games, like social amateur play, I don't need to go for surgery. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's the point where you rise, you have to retire. Now. Yes, that's, that's why I also consider, uh, the time I was really, uh, how to say, do not know how to make decision because I've been in national team like 15 years. So it's very hard for me to make this, this decision. So after I discuss with my uh, parents, my coach, my partner, so I think that it's the best time to come up. Come up. Yeah. That was a long journey indeed. It must be a difficult one. Yes, it's not easy. Hmm. <laughs> then after you come up, uh, uh, you started anything, perhaps? Like, maybe teach some kids how to play badminton? Yeah, that's, that's why I, in the introduction, I said that I'm the founder for the Mandalay ah. Sport Academy. So, I'm teaching the kids, uh, also adults, to play badminton. Oh, this academy is specifically for teaching badminton? Yeah. yeah. And you also uh, started a YouTube channel, I believe? Uh, yes, I started uh, during MCO1. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Teaching, uh, giving tips, I presume, and all those uh, uh, tips and tricks. I started to do uh, YouTube is because I love to do fitness. Oh, okay. Like heat training, all this. Yeah, so I wish to like influence more people to do exercise during MCO. Ah, so like go to gym, like do gym at home? Or? Yeah, do gym at home and also uh, sharing some badminton tips. Hmm. Yeah. Then uh, try your badminton journey. Do you ever like... Um, that anything that made you feel like you won? Like, is that like, some sort of lucky charm? Because uh, from my uh, belief, la, normally when we play sports, yeah, we have something that keeps us uh, a little charm or a little sports equipment that makes us feel like we can win. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, you have it? Yeah. You actually brought it today. Whoa. Uh, yeah, okay. So normally, uh, if I go for competition, actually we do have a checklist. Oh, so I write okay. everything, write everything, but of course, the most thing I won't forget is the headset. A headset? Okay. Oh, okay. okay. That's interesting. Well, yeah, because uh, like he said, is can help me to like uh, relieve my tension during competitions. Oh, okay. Yeah. So even in the flight, sometimes we have to fly like very far away, like uh, oh. 13, 13 hours. So you can use his set and listen our song, favorite song, oh. and watch movie. <laughs> Oh, okay, so this is like your favorite lucky charm. You believe that you're holding on to this will let you win every yeah, single time. Yeah, of course, because uh, every time like we hop <coughs> in the bus to the competition, mm -hmm. like we are sharing the same bus with other countries also. Oh. So imagine your, your opponent also in the same bus. Oh. When you see her, you also like, feel a bit like nervous. Shy. Nervous, oh, nervous. Nervous, oh, nervous, okay. Yeah, sometimes you face like the ranking higher than you. You feel, oh, a bit kanchong already. Okay, how do you know they're ranking higher than you? Like? You because the, the draw will be, uh, the, they were stated one. For example, like top seat, it was right number one, or number two, or number three, number four. Also, you, let's say you got no seated. So you will see, oh, I'm facing the third seat. Yeah, so imagine the opponent is in the same bus, right? So you see also Kanjong already. Oh. So oh. I will take this out, then listen to the song, re release my tension. Oh. But then, uh, when you play badminton, uh, is there some sort of like a tier leveling? Because from my belief, when I wanted to get started at anything, I always told that, uh, let's say playing piano, that's beginner mm. level, uh, intermediate, and advanced. And then when I learn a language like Japanese, that's N1, N2, N3. So when you play badminton, is that some sort of like a leveling system to know that you're good? Uh, badminton actually also seem like, wow, what you said, got beginner, okay. got intermediate, got advanced, okay. also got like amateur players. Ooh, so, okay. Yeah, so uh, of course they never see the age. Okay. So for That's example, right. like 10 years old, you also can beat, if you can beat the senior like 14 years old, 15 years old. Ah, you're good, you're good. That's good, good, good la, bonus. La. Uh, then uh, you consider like advanced good or like intermediate, you cons consider can go tournament already. Like at which stage are you considered being able to Go tournament. For example, like uh, got one player from Thailand. Okay. Uh, that time she was fourteen years old, but she can beat all the senior. Oh. And she go. Young. She went for this world champion <coughs> and get champion. 
Yeah. Oh. So it's de- it depends. Uh, depends because like in Malaysia or what lah, other country, if you can beat the number one, of course the coach will send you to the highest. Oh. Regardless whether you're intermediate or beginner lah, as long as you win, yeah. you win lah. Yes, okay. correct. Though if you in national team, right? Normally they won't see you are intermediate or advanced player. Normally in national team, you are advanced already. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, that's very yeah, interesting. Un- unless you're in backup team. In backup yeah. team means like, uh, also at once, just that your level slightly lower a bit. Oh, but I can still play tournament lah. Can still, but the level of competition is lower lah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So this makes a lot of people want to join pro tournament. Or if you think about it like this, that a lot of people will rather be like, hey, I bet I also can join to- pro tournament. <laughs> okay lah, uh, just to wrap, wrap it up lah, uh, out of curiosity, I ask lah, do you have any recommendation to tell like your our viewers, our audience, that what you know, what should they be prepared for if they wanted to go for pro tournament in badminton? Yeah, of course. I think uh, first you have to make sure you are good enough to play, and also you have to be very confident uh, during competition because uh, during competition is different with training. So in training, you won't feel like very nervous feeling, but once it, in competition, you'll feel very nervous. Then you like couldn't play at all. Oh, okay. it yes. affects mentality as well. Yeah, because like, uh, for example, I got two student example. Mm-hmm. Got one student during training is perform very good, very good attitude, can play very well. But once he went for competition, he like don't know how to play, and oh. every shot just hit outside. Then another student training attitude not so good, and very lazy. Whoa. Okay. okay. <laughs> but once he went to competition, it's like wow, like sun already. Oh. <laughs> So I become god mode. Wow, like god instant play, press cheat code, I win. <laughs> like god already can play very well, the skill is very uh, good. Hacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, okay. there's, there's why we always say that there's two types of players. Ah, okay. yeah. So uh, there's like talented and skill, la. and you work on both. La. Uh, Find balance. Uh, yeah. Mm, okay. So uh, I guess that's about much it. Any last words before we end this podcast session? Don't forget to follow my IG, Instagram, ah. Janice Wood, and also my YouTube channel, yeah, Janice yeah. Wood. Bro. And also subscribe Leaning. Yeah, don't worry, all the links will be at the description below. So uh, thank you again, everyone, for popping in here for our podcast station at Spot Check. We'll see you next time on episode two. Find out soon who are we going to invite. Probably another pro champion in some particular spots. We'll check on them. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. Yeah. Get a very good equipment, your racket, oh, your racket, racket bag, and of course the shoe, so you can get it from the store.